Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to look at how we can calculate the minimum number of independent reactions. So our goal is that we will uh, find the rank of a matrix, which is a rigorous technique for finding the minimum set of independent reactions. The reason we need this is for Gibbs phase rule. So if we let pi represent the number of phases, C the number of components, M the number of independent reactions, and R the number of restrictions or independent rules that we need to uh, keep true, you know, so maybe you have a feed rate that's always two to one or something like that. Then Gibbs phase rule says that the degrees of freedoms, the number of independent variables you can specify, or yeah, specify, is 2 plus C minus pi, the number of phases, minus M, the number of independent reactions, minus R, the number of restrictions. And the question really becomes, how do we calculate or how do we know M, the number of independent reactions? So frequently you either have been told some reactions that will occur, or you just have kind of figured it out on your own, but how do you know whether or not all of these are independent? For some systems of reactions, it's a small set and it's pretty easy that you can kind of intuitively just see where, you know, maybe two are a linear combination of another. But it's kind of ideally we would have a more rigorous approach so that we could deal with larger systems of reactions. So a more rigorous approach would be to write the reactions as a matrix with species in different columns and each reaction as a different row, and then from that calculate the rank of the matrix. Now to calculate the rank of a matrix, I like, uh, there are many, many tutorials out on the web, but I like one that I found to be just particularly straightforward, uh, easycalculation.com. Okay, but basically the matrix rank is the number of independent rows, for our case that's reactions, and this could also be for columns if you're doing it strictly for the uh, math side of it, but for us we want rows, those are our reactions, that are in the matrix, and an independent row, which would correspond to an independent reaction, is going to be one that has when we finish the manipulations, has at least one non-zero element, is different from all the other rows, is not a multiple of any other row, and is not a linear combination of the other rows. So how do we do that? We use Gaussian elimination. Now you may have done this at some stage back in a math class. Uh, Gaussian elimination is a system of row manipulations so that we can rewrite the matrix in a form where we're going to first put the first element in the first row to be a 1 and just see what else follows after that. And then we want for each additional row that the leading element in the columns will always be to the right of the previous row's, row's leading elements. Okay, so it'd be like in the second row, you could have a zero for the first and a one or a zero for the second, and always you want the first one or the first number to be to the right of the first number in all the rows above. So we're going to be kind of creating a triangular matrix, upper triangular. Um, if at any point you have a row with all zero elements, then we're just going to move that row to the bottom. And the way we do this is through exchanging rows, multiplying rows with the non-zero scalar. We can also exchange columns, and we can add multiples of rows together. So let's look at an example. Here we have three reactions. Water plus carbon monoxide makes CO2 plus hydrogen. Water plus hydrogen atoms make 
hydrogen molecules plus OH, hydroxyl groups. Hydroxyl group plus CO makes CO2 plus H. Now, let me just first show you that if I number these, so I'm going to number this reaction 1, 2, and 3 to simplify things. What I want to do first is I'm going to take reaction 2 and add it to reaction 3. So if I do that, I have H2O plus H plus OH plus CO makes H2 plus OH plus CO2 plus H. And here, I'm going to see that I have an H on both sides. I have an OH on both sides. And so I end up with H2O plus CO makes H2 plus CO2. But that is reaction one. So therefore, I can see that two of these are a linear combination, or one of these is a linear combination of the other two. So therefore, it appears to me that there are two independent reactions. But now let's do this using the matrix technique. So first, I want to set this up so that I organize my species. So I am going to set this up with my species organized in columns and my reactions organized in rows. Hope that you take a moment to pause the video and make sure that you're setting this up in a similar way. But so for reaction one, I have on the reaction side, or reactant side, excuse me, I have H2O and CO. So those both have a positive one. And on the product side, I have CO2 and H2, and so I gave those a negative one. Now you could have switched the signs to being negative for reactants and positive for products. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't really matter. And then hydrogen and OH do not appear in this reaction, so they have a zero. And I did that for each reaction. Now, what I need to do is look at these and create that upper triangular matrix. And so step one is going to be that I want to make sure that there's a one in the first location, which there already is. So that means I'm finished with the top row. It is in a form that is acceptable. I have a positive one in the first position. I now need to make sure that I have zeros below this. For row two, that's fine. I have that already, so I can just recopy that one. For row three, I notice that I have a one in that first position. I want to eliminate that. So I'm going to take row one and I'm going to subtract row three and write that answer in the location at the bottom. So one minus one is zero. Negative one minus negative one is zero. Zero minus negative one is one. Zero minus one is negative one. Negative one minus zero is negative one. One minus zero is one. Okay? So now then, I make sure that now then my first one in the second row is to the right of the first one in the row above it. And I'm happy with this one. Now then, as long as I still have zeros here, then I want to see about putting a zero in this location. So to do that, I'm going to take row two and subtract row three. My first two rows will not change.
And my last row, as I go through and subtract identical terms, is all zeros. The rank is counting the rows that have entries once I get it into this triangular form. If they are all zero, doesn't count. So therefore, the rank is two. There are two independent reactions. Thank you very much for your time.